Hello everyone, who hasn't dreamed of having the body of a superhero, able to withstand shocks and injuries, and to grow older while retaining all of their physical abilities? While I can't promise to turn you into a marvel-like mutant, in this video you'll find tips to strengthen your tendons, fascia, and preserve the elasticity of your body. What has always struck me is that some athletes get injured frequently, while others, despite playing contact sports, almost never do. In the first category, we have athletes like Serena Williams and Kobe Bryant, who have suffered a wide range of injuries. On the other hand, there are athletes like Tom Brady, the former American football star, who, despite playing a high-risk sport, continued to perform at a high level even into his mid-40s, with only one knee surgery throughout his long career. Another example is Kelly Slater, the retired surfing legend, who remains in excellent shape and continued to compete at the highest levels until the age of 50 yo. Or Ivo Karlovich, the oldest tennis player, who at 42 years old was still among the world's top 500 players. So, what do these resilient athletes do differently? They learned how to strengthen their joints and tendon. In the past, some athletes managed to slow the aging process. For instance, George Hackenschmidt, an Estonian wrestler, could still jump over a rope stretched between two chairs well into his 70s. Similarly, Joseph Pilates, as seen in the photos, developed his method while treating soldiers wounded in war. At 57, he looked 20 years younger, and even in his 80s, he maintained a youthful appearance. Another example is Valentin de Cool, whom I've discussed in a previous video. After being bedridden for several years due to a spinal cord injury, he managed, through immense effort, to walk again and came back even stronger, capable of performing impressive athletic feats. In the video, you can see him lifting two young women, which must amount to at least 240 pounds. More recently, we have Ben Patrick, better known as the Knee Sovertos guy, who struggled with knee pain as a teenager, but has since strengthened his knees to achieve remarkable athletic feats. One of the secrets to aging with healthy joints is maintaining strong fascia. Fascia are like an elastic sheath, much like a wetsuit, that help offload stress from the joints and make the body more elastic. In the enlarged illustration of fascia, you can see that they are made up of intertwined collagen fibers that form tendons, ligaments, joint capsules, and muscular aponeuroses. It's important to note that we have around 900 ligaments and 4,000 tendons, but only 650 muscles, which highlights the importance of training and maintaining healthy tendons and ligaments, something that's often overlooked. In animals, tendons are often much stronger than in humans. In fact, the Achilles tendon is the strongest tendon in humans and can support up to eight times a person's body weight. Tendons and ligaments can regenerate, though this process isn't perfect and depends on factors like nutrition, hydration, sleep quality, cellular permeability, and vascularization. For example, here's a lynx jumping across a frozen landscape. Thanks to its long tendons, it can leap six times its body length. Similarly, if you look at a horse's leg, you'll notice there's hardly any muscle, unlike our own legs with their large calf muscles. Horses have mainly bones and tendons, which allow them to clear obstacles up to 6.6 .6 feet high, despite their average weight of 660 pounds. In this tensegrity model, you can see how the tension in the cables keeps the rigid structures apart, reducing wear and tear. The same principle applies to joints where fascia act like cables and bones represent the rigid structures. Tendon strength has been cultivated for centuries, especially in Chinese martial arts. Here, Ido Portal demonstrates a Qigong movement that generates powerful force by whipping his arm, despite his muscles being completely relaxed. He even taught this technique to Conor McGregor, who used it in his fights. Next, we see an athlete who looks a bit like LeBron James, the basketball player for the Lakers effortlessly jumping to a bar at eye level. What's interesting is that tendon strength, often called old man strength, tends to persist with age, even though we lose about 1% of muscle mass each year as we get older. This loss of muscle mass is called sarcopenia. However, athletes or manual laborers often retain impressive strength into old age, especially in their hands. Here's an example. Danny Hodges, an American wrestler in his 80s, can still crush an apple with one hand. Athletes with well-developed tendons are also often found among climbers, especially in their forearms. Here, you can see a climber's hands with noticeably hypertrophied fingers, 
a condition known as climber's finger syndrome, caused by tendons that have thickened over time. Similar developments can be seen in other sports, such as mixed martial arts. For example, Tony Ferguson's extensor tendons on his feet are visibly pronounced even when he's not standing. Compare them with your own, and you'll likely notice that your tendons aren't as prominent. This is because, during his efforts, all his fascia lines contract, transmitting tension down to his feet. 30 years ago, it was believed that if you had joint problems, you should avoid sports to prevent further wear and tear. Today, we know that's completely false. For example, if you compare the diameter of a baseball player's throwing arm bone to that of their non-throwing arm, it's often twice as thick. Similarly, weightlifters have cross ligaments that are twice as thick as those of the general population, and they also have thicker cartilage in their hips and knees. This diagram shows that when the industrial era began, arthritis developed slowly. But now, in the post-industrial era, with our more sedentary lifestyles, arthritis progresses much faster, especially with age. Many strongmen understood the importance of tendon strength, like Eugène Sando, who created a physical training system based on performing long series of over 100 repetitions. Today, we might wonder why such training was necessary, but it was actually designed to strengthen tendons. However, certain tendons respond better to shorter, heavier sets. Another strongman, George Jowett, was known for his incredible strength, such as lifting a 90-kilogram anvil by the horn and raising it above his head. He was methodical and scientific in his approach, and developed a tendon reinforcement system that included partial repetitions. This allowed him to lift enormous weights by only completing the final third of a movement, like in bench pressing, where he would barely bend his arms. Although his system was effective, it was unfairly forgotten, just like other forms of training, such as club bell exercises, which originated in India. These exercises involve ballistic movements with alternating contractions and stretches, which strengthen fascia lines. The ancient Chinese also had their own systems for strengthening muscles and tendons, as seen in Qigong literature, which featured anatomical charts of what they called muscle tendon meridians. In this diagram, you can see a Tai Chi movement from the Chen style, where the thumb connects to the big toe. The twisting and tension of the limbs create tension in the fascia lines, generating force that is not purely muscular, similar to a twisted elastic that then springs back like a whip. In the world of Kung Fu, there's a technique called Iron Shirt, aimed at making the body invulnerable to injury. Here, for instance, a practitioner strikes his bones with a bundle of bamboo stalks, or sometimes metal rods. According to Kung Fu masters, this helps strengthen the bones by removing dead cells. Next, we see Zhang Wiley, a Chinese MMA athlete, performing rapid elbow extensions. This technique is also practiced by the legendary powerlifting club Westside Barbells to develop strong tendons. By doing hundreds of repetitions with very light resistance, you vascularize the tendons. For this exercise, the return or eccentric phase should be as relaxed as possible because tensing the muscles would cause congestion, which is not the goal. The aim here is to strengthen the tendons. Next, we have Devon Larratt, a Canadian arm wrestling champion, performing biceps pulsations to strengthen his tendons. Arm wrestling is an explosive sport that puts heavy stress on tendons. Another interesting development is the osteo-strong system, a technology designed in the United States to strengthen bones. It involves machines that allow a person to resist very heavy loads, with the machine increasing the load to several times the individual's body weight. When the person lets go, the load is immediately released, thanks to the electronic system. According to studies, these machines strengthen bone density because bones optimize their strength under loads, equivalent to six to eight times body weight. However, these loads can only be tolerated during the eccentric phase. For those without access to these expensive machines, research shows that bones are strengthened more effectively through impact than through progressive weight training. Therefore, running, jumping, and plyometric training are great for building robust bones. Another method for strengthening ligaments and tendons is what's known as chaos training. This involves a wide variety of exercises, often using soft or hard-to-grasp weights like sandbags, performed on uneven terrain and with less than perfect technique. It's similar to farm work due to its variety and helps to strengthen muscles and tendons that aren't typically targeted in conventional weight training, such as the neck, forearms, and trapezius muscles. If you're interested in the topic, take a look at my book, Unbreakable, How to Strengthen the Joints, According to Science, link in description. You'll find a wealth of information that's nearly impossible to find elsewhere.
helping you reinforce your body's architecture, tendons, ligaments, the cartilage, and prevent injuries by becoming more resilient. I hope this video has been helpful. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you have your own methods for strengthening your joints, feel free to share it in the description.